Uh, thanks everyone for coming tonight to another community conversation uh, presented by ACCM. Tonight we'll bring you this uh, panel discussion on HIV and STI testing in partnership with Jacques et Jacques, a joint project conducted in partnership with Direction Santé Publique of Quebec. Uh, we're pleased tonight to screen as well the uh, Phil Moon Trail in the presence of its director. Uh, and uh, before we get started with our panel, I just want to thank uh, Kajibi for the use of their space, especially uh, Pamela for all of her hard work. Uh, Department Santé Publique de Montréal, all of our panelists here tonight, uh, the Moon Trail team, uh, Jacques et Jacques, and everyone for coming. Thank you so much. So uh, I'd like to introduce ACCM for people who aren't aware of us. I think probably everyone is, but. For those who aren't, ACCM has a 28-year history of uh, serving people living with HIV and Hepatitis C on the island of Montreal. Uh, ACCM envisions a society free of stigma and are committed to building a community where people living with HIV and Hepatitis C receive the support they need. Uh, so for those who are interested about our organization or our testing or other resources, we have a table uh, right at the door. Uh, that also has a guide to uh, pretty much all of the testing clinics on the island uh, with uh, information about how to access them. So tonight, in the, in the vision of continuing our series of community conversations, we are again holding a panel in a bar. So just be aware that uh, there might be background noise, different things like that, and we'll try and manage that as best as possible. So, I'd like to start tonight by introducing Eric Lefebvre. Eric has worked in the field of sexual health since the beginning of his nursing career in 2007. He started out with uh, Ottawa Public Health, where he offered STI and HIV screening in various environments, and sat on diverse committees and groups related to LGBT health. He has also helped coordinate the opening of a new service, Gay Zone, Zone Gay, an STI screening clinic for gay and bisexual men in Ottawa. So since 2009, he continued in this line of work at Clinic Medical Cartier Latin in Montreal, and Eric now sits on the board of directors of Rizzo, and as well the, is a Quebec representative for the Canadian Association of Nurses in HIV AIDS Care since 2013. So thank you very much for being here, Eric. And What did you want me to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Talk about talk about your work. About my work. Um, the guy asked me to talk about my work as from a nursing perspective uh, and a bit of the challenges that I see. Uh, we're doing each turn right now. Yes, yeah, so we'll, yeah. we'll go through the panels. Okay. Um, so often, what I see as challenges is. Uh, people who, who don't really understand how to, how to evaluate their risks and so that's often uh, a discussion that we need to have with uh, patients. I mostly do testing with gay and bisexual men at, at the clinic. Um, I try to talk about new, uh, new advances like, like PrEP and uh, a lot of questions come up about HIV viral load and undetectable, and um, the risk with with uh, in those situations. Uh, make, I make sure that people are always aware of uh, PEP, the post exposure treatment. A challenge in a pri in like a semi private clinic would be um, guys who don't have a health card or or private insurance. And as as a, as a nurse, we also have some limits when we can do testing uh, for people who have symptoms or not. Uh, this is less of a worry for me because I cannot easily like call a doctor or knock knock on the doctor's door. Um, but like if somebody has a rash or um, just flu like symptoms, we can't even do like an HIV test. And the same thing for some treatments. Uh, some of that is going to change by the end of the year because the nurses are going to be um, having a prescribing number, just like doctors, so we can prescribe treatment for gonorrhea and chlamydia. 
but this will only be like uh, for for guys who don't for people who don't have symptoms. So the next step will be for people who do have symptoms. Uh, a typical a typical interview would be just general um, like when the last person got tested, if they ever got tested, and what's their sex life looked like since then. Uh, alcohol and drug use. I don't really ask specific questions that always public health asks me to ask, like uh, you know, number of partners and things like that. I don't. I try not to make it a questionnaire, so it's more uh, flowing and and uh, less boring actually. <laughs> also. Um, and then, depending on what activities, sexual activities, um, patients have have done, and will do like blood tests, urine tests, throat swab, anal swab, or vaginal swabs. And we can also do a rapid HIV test with a finger prick. Um, what else? Some challenges that I see also is like the re the the results. So some often people have to come back for results in certain clinics, or they have to do like a telephone tag kind of thing. I I work by email, and I I have uh, guys sign the consent form, uh, and so I send them an email the day of, and then they reply to me like in a week or two and ask me about the results. Because most of the time we do a rapid HIV test, so if I need to call them for syphilis or gonorrhea chlamydia, that's that works over the phone. Um, so guys really appreciate that. And ideally they would have access to their test results online if, if we could, but it's always a question of security. When someone has a positive result for HIV, uh, sometimes, like most of the time when I've, when I've given a positive result, it's been a rapid result. I've worked a lot with the rapid test. Um, so it's always important to make sure if, before doing the test that the person, like what they know, to evaluate what they know about HIV in general and transmission and uh, if, like, how, they would, how they would react if they had a positive result, what kind of the, the support uh, system looks like. And if ever they do get a positive result, it's about uh, reassuring and talking about you know, the lifespan, that it's not what it was 20 to 30 years ago for, uh, for what some people know about HIV, the treatments that are getting uh, more easy, and we're even seeing some, um, some studies that are looking at uh, injections like every two or three months instead of taking pills every day. Um, and then also partner notification. So if someone has been newly diagnosed, uh, especially if they're in pri primary infection and very, uh, the virus is very contagious, then uh, we try to reach their partners in the last couple of months. We can do that anonymously and through public health also. Obviously we evaluate uh, if somebody has any uh, like dark thoughts or suicidal risks. And then we also refer to community partners, um, like ACCM, of course, and uh, Réseau and Maison Pécaire at the CLSC. And we have a social worker uh, and a psychologist at the clinic. Uh, you guys had asked me to talk about the different types of tests, the HIV tests. Uh, at the clinic, we don't do an anonymous HIV test. That's mostly done in certain uh, CLSCs and like at the SPOT uh, project. So the anonymous means you don't have to show up with a health, like any piece of ID when you can do your HIV test. There's a nominal test where you, you have an ID and you, you open a chart. Uh, but instead of using your name, it's a code that's used in the lab. Like, let's say if I knew a lot of people that worked in the lab and I didn't want them to know what my testing, then I can ask that kind of test. And it would be nominal, but it would be 
put into my chart uh, when the results get in. And then the confidential testing is just the standard regular testing where it's your name and it goes to the lab and it comes back in your chart. Um, for, for surveillance purposes, there's um, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and syphilis that are, uh, I know the name in French, but it's the Maladie à déclaration obligatoire. And so those go to public health from the laboratories. Uh, in Montreal, we don't really do any surveillance for gonorrhea and chlamydia. There's, there's too many cases, actually. So we do, so we do uh, surveillance for syphilis. Um, and so, like, once a month or so, I get, I get some results from a public health nurse, and I have to go through them to see, um, like, if these were new cases of syphilis, and maybe how, how people got them, and that helps us evaluate the programs. And um, at one point, we knew, we knew that there was a, um, a high percentage in, in, in young, uh, young gay, bisexual, gay men, young bisexual men, sorry. And uh, so we had a kind of a different idea, I guess a different approach or different strategies to uh, how to, to to reach them and their and their partners. For HIV, uh, it's not the same thing as the other infections. They um, they are kind of given another code uh, with, the pub with the public health lab. And those are also like for surveillance, so it's, we know <coughs> if ever something pops up where um, there's a lot more transmission in a certain group and what we can do to, um, to do more uh, health prevention in those groups. As far as treatments go, um, all are covered for uh, people who have a Quebec health card. And whether, um, whether guys are, are HIV positive or negative, um, I think it's just as important to get tested. Uh, there can be long-term consequences for infections like syphilis if they're not treated early. Uh, like if they're take their um, detected in the first year, you only need one shot of bisulin in each butt cheek, and if not, after a year you need like three times. So that's that's a good reason to get tested uh, more often. Uh, and I guess that's about it. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Eric. Thanks. <laughs>